Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inshallah, we'll carry on um, uh, about Iman. Now, there are three opinions about Iman with the people of Sunnah. Yeah? There's three. Uh, as far as I know, there isn't a fourth. But you know how the world is going, how Muslims are going. <laughs> um, the first is that it's a matter of the heart understood as tasdiq as an affirmation yeah? and consent only and articulation according to condition and ruling this is the choice the ikhtiyar of Imam Ghazali and you know uh, someone that you know um, uh, has molded my thinking is um, uh, Sidi Taha um, Dr. Taha Abdurrahman um, he used to be a um, uh, professor of um, logic at Rabat University and um, uh, he said Muslims are afraid to study Imam Ghazali he says in the Muslim world and that was in the mid 90s there is no chair in any Muslim university for Imam Ghazali it's like you know the people who talk about Iman and taste are the ones that we don't study yeah? but anyway so that's the ikhtiyar of Imam Ghazali the second is it is a matter of the heart with articulation so it's tasdiq and qaw. This being the position of Imam Abu al-Hasan Ashari, rahmatullahi and a group from his companions. Or, that's the third one, or it is a composite of the above with action being incorporated into it. Yeah. Now, that's, you know, um, in Arabic they say قَوْلٌ بِاللِّسَانِ وَتَصْدِيقٌ بِالْقَلْبِ وَعَمَلٌ Yeah? That's, you know, and there are hadith transmitted very, you know, um, uh, uh, weak hadith but um, uh, the hadith are there but the most um, uh, correct position, and you know in the Shifa Qadir Yad, leans towards that as well, the position of Imam Abu al-Hazan Ashari, that it's affirmation of the heart and articulation. Yeah? And what that does, this unites the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Yeah? We, uh, with this definition, we don't have any... Uh, uh, any arguments with that. Yeah. But what this, uh, before I move on, it's, you know, a conviction. It's, it's a conviction of the heart. Yeah. Only when you're convinced do you affirm. Yeah. And when you have that, yeah, this is, you know, you find the importance of La ilaha illallah. Yeah? Um, uh, I do not know of, um, you know, any dhikr. You know, uh, Imam Malik Radulam in the Mu'atta, he transmits that, you know, the Prophet salatu was salam, uh, said that the best statement that I and the prophets before me have made is La ilaha illallah. Yeah, there has been nothing better than that. This statement is the one that gives that conviction because it negates the other and affirms the one. <coughs> okay. The word Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Again, is the same as the word Allah. 
is a signpost. Signpost to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah in Surah Fat says Muhammad al-Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sorry, Sidi. Actually, we can't have this. Either we stop or they stop. Really, I mean, if they insist on doing, I told them they couldn't do it now. I said they have. I'm okay. No, I know it's, it's okay now. Thank, thank you, Sidi, but it's for the recording. Okay. And, and for the ambience here. Okay. It's such a sensitive subject. Shall I wait till you come? Yes. Yeah, okay. Two minutes. Inshallah. Oh. Carry? Yeah. Inshallah. Okay. Because the Prophet والسلام, the word Muhammad, um, linguistically means someone who is continuously praised, yeah? continuously. You know, um, just something I, I want to share what I have, you know, learned from my teachers is that the criterion, <coughs> yeah, <coughs> between us and the other is never God. Between, you know, Muslim and non-Muslim is not God. The criterion is Muhammad, and it's always the point yeah, is Muhammad is not God yeah. and this is why it's so important that you know we teach our, ourselves our families by the way you know um, if you're married Maliki Fik obliges you to teach your wife the Dururi Fiddin you're under obligation to make sure that she has the Dururi Fiddin and if she has to go to a Dars or she has to go to the mosque to learn those then she you're under obligation to make sure that she has that and it's it, this is where our downfall in the UK is I for decades just taught men and since last year, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, I finished, you know, um, uh, two weeks ago, uh, the text of Ibn Ashir and, you know, the commentary of um, Sidi Mayara with a group of women. And I see more benefit. Because immediately you see a change in the household. Immediately you see a change in the household. And that's why it's important that, you know, we are the only madhab, as far as I know, yeah, that does not stop the woman from attending the five daily prayers. We don't stop them. In, in the mosque. In the mosque. In the mosque, we don't stop them. And um, uh, the only, uh, there are certain conditions attached when they go out. You know, uh, um, the scent. That's it. And you know, they uh, you know, they shouldn't have any jewelry or whatever that attracts them. Other than that, they should not be because. Uh, I, you, if you have a community yeah, where women are praying five times a day with men and they are attending, you know, the uh, wajibat, you know, the dururi fid deen, they are learning what they are personally, we are obliged, and then you tell me if there is not a revolution. Because you know the adage was, if you you know the adage with the uh, uh, Maliki fuqaha was that if you had four, four fuqaha, there was a revolution. <laughs> if there were four, you know, fuqaha, there was a revolution. I'm telling you, if you have four households, Allah's my witness. You know, if you have four households 
who know the Daruri Fiddin and they implement them, yeah, there's a sea change. There's a sea change. Okay. Why did I talk, start talking about that? <coughs> anyway, whatever it happened, it happened. But it's important. It's really important. Because the Prophet wasalam, made sure yeah, that there was provision. And alhamdulillah, you know, wherever you go, just make sure that there is provision. And um, uh, uh, yes, men are under obligation. Men are, uh, the husband is, is under obligation to provide education for his uh, wife, uh, uh, the Daruri Fiddin. If she's got to come to the mosque, he makes sure she comes to the mosque. And um, uh, alhamdulillah, you know what our Sheikh does. Um, he gives. He says that uh, men have their gathering, women have their gathering. Women, when they have the gathering, men look after the children. Because you know, uh, alhamdulillah, you know, we get away with so much, you know, subhanallah. Anyway, <laughs> alhamdulillah. Okay, abd. Yeah, the word abd, because the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, that Muhammad is his slave. Now, this word abd, uh, whenever I say slave, certain people have problems. It's used, some people translate it as servant. <coughs> yeah? Do you know what the word servant, uh, the Arabic word for servant is? Khadim. Is not abd. Abd is slave. Abd is owned. Yeah? Is owned by his Rabb. The word abd is attached to Rabb Sayyid Malik. Yeah? To Sayyid Malik Rabb. By the way, do you know what the Arabic is for housewife? Rabbatul Bayt. <laughs> the sustainer of the household. Yeah? Subhanallah, you know. Not, you know, housewife, but sustainer of the household. Okay. Now, it also comes... Uh, from, you know, how the earth is leveled. The word Abd. The, how the earth is lef leveled. Paved. Meaning it's humbled. For ease. And so, when that's where, you know, the word slave is lowered. So, all who are lowered, do not reason or find. Because you know, if you're humbled, that's it. You're owned. And this is, you know, the concept that we have, that's another thing that we need to get back to. You know, this being abd, being owned, by God and being attached to God shouldn't be you know it should be a uh, um, uh, a thing alhamdulillah you know uh, shouldn't have pride but this should be a point of pride should be a point of pride that you are owned by God that you have attachment it's like, you know, in, uh, we've got this phrase in Punjabi that, you know, when something goes wrong, it says, don't worry. Yeah, I've got someone looking after me. We say, Sirte Sain Hega. Like, you know, uh, I've got a master. Yeah? 
Because when you're owned, it's his responsibility, not yours. Yeah? And it's the, it's, you know, these concepts, again, you know, language is a concept. But the concepts attached to them, we need to own them again. We need to own them and start living them. So the word abd, yeah, slave, forget about, you know, yes, history is history. Yeah? But we're talking about in the context of God. Yeah? Being owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, you know, can you... Mind, it, 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 it gives up. It, it gives up. It can't fathom it. But this is the highest maqam and the most, you know, the name that the Prophet والسلام, was proud of, that he was owned by God. He was Muhammad Abduhu wa Rasulu. He was his Abd. Asrabi Abdihi. Yeah? And Allah was proud, you know, to call him his slave. And again, uh, with the word Abd is, you know, that you're in need. I, I know, you know, the word Fakir carries that word. Yeah, the, 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 But here, in the context of you know the word Abd, um, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "None is there in the heavens and the earth, but He comes to the Rahman as an Abd, as a slave, everyone." Yeah. So. The word slave is a thing that is in need. Yeah? And it is in need of God. Okay. So now we move on to this word taqlid. Imam Ibn Hajib says taqlid will not suffice. And in this being the most correct position... And there is no escape from articulating, following knowledge and relying on it in general. Not in the particular, but in the general. Now, taqlid. What you find is that, you know, in the last hundred years or so, it's become a dirty word. Yeah? It's a dirty word. When you ask them, what does it mean? Yeah? Mushkil. Now, taqlid literally means, you know, in the fiqhi sense, in the fiqhi sense is you take someone else's word. Yeah, you take someone's opinion without asking for evidence. That's the usual. So, in aqidah, the Asharis don't permit you. It's not permitted. What I said before, that you know there needs to be conviction. If you take someone else's word, it's like, you know, uh, this man came to Imam Malik. It's a well-known um, uh, story. It's a story, but it did happen. It's well documented. The man came to Imam Malik and said, the narration say that there was more than one. He said, I want to debate with you. So Imam Malik, you know, turned the other way. And he came round and said, I want to debate with you. And he turned the other way. He's like, you know, go away. <laughs> so they want to debate. He says, why? Now, Imam Malik says, why? He says, if you convince me I will follow you. And if I convince you, you will follow me. And Imam Malik smiled and says, what happens if a third person comes and convinces both of us? What do we do then? Yeah. 
And this is the why in Iman, in faith, taqlid is unacceptable. You need to be convinced within yourself. Yeah. As Imam Ibn Ashir says, not in detail. What you need to not have taqlid in is the belief in God. Yeah? If you believe without any recourse to any scripture, I'll give you an example. If you ask someone, you know the tree outside? If you asked who made that tree, what would be the answer? God. Yeah? You're not a muqallid anymore. That's how simple it is. That's how simple it is. But if you take someone else's word, in that you know there is a God who made that tree, then it's on sand. It needs to be on rock. Sheikh Tantawi, and you know, uh, I heard his, um, you know, he, he did this, the Rusul Hassaniyah. You know, if, if your Arabic is good enough, you know, it's worth watching, you know, the Durus al Hassaniya. The Durus al Hassaniya, you know, um, they happen in Ramadan. Uh, the old king of um, uh, Morocco, in Ramadan, he would call the elite scholars. And it's, you know, it's worth seeing. Because you have the king sitting on the floor, and the whole court is sitting on the floor, and the sheikh or the imam is on the member giving a lecture. And uh, I tell you one of the most memorable, uh, 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 you know, um, lectures is um, uh, uh, one of the uh, faqiha came. This woman came and she sat. And I showed it to some of our, um, you know, um, from people from the subcontinent. Oh, stuff like that, stuff like that. You know, woman on a member, and you know, in open court. Was the king humbly? Huh? Was the king humbly on the ground? No, the king's always on the ground. Yeah. The king, he doesn't even his even his cushion is is that that cushion, not even one of these. It's on the ground. Okay. So there there shouldn't be taqlid. If there is taqlid, there's doubt. And um, in Iman, there can't be doubt. What I was going to say about Sheikh Tantawi, Sheikh Tantawi says that Aqidah should be such. Yeah? Mountains can move if they want to. Aqidah shouldn't move. That's how sound the belief, faith in God should be. And when you have, you know, that sound faith, yeah, you don't need Islam. You have God. Yeah. And that's what affects. That's what affects. Okay. There is, before I move away, there is, you know, um, uh, an opinion. Not an opinion, uh, the Maturidis. You know, um, in Aqidah, within the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama, we have three schools. Yeah? We have the Asharis, who are Malikis and Shafi'is. Then we have the Hanafis, who are known as Maturidis. And then we have the Hanbalis. We don't have a fourth. We don't have a fourth. Yeah? So if you hear another name, that's a fourth. Now, they accept taqlid. Because what the Asher is, they say that we oblige people, but we are not obliging people a burden that they can't bear. We are not saying in detail, we are saying in general. Yeah? that you need to have that conviction, the belief in God. 
And um, again, you know, there's scholarly debate on this. Um, I think some of you are familiar with them. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Aziz the Bagh, Rahmatullah, you know, Sahibu Ibris. Now, the one who wrote that, his student, um, Alama Sijil Masi, um, he ha- actually has a book on this subject. It's, in, it's interesting reading. Um, it's called Raddu Tashdeed Fi Masla Taqlid. Um, uh, it's um, it, if you've read um, uh, Ibn Rushd, um, uh, it's worth um, uh, reading him. And this is, you know, again, a simple equation thing that you know you use reason simply. Two and two will always make four. If you ask a child who made the tree. He'll say, God, or it's made. You don't, we don't need uh, the name God made it as long as you know you accept that there is a creator. Yeah? And if, if you ask a child who made the cup, he won't say it's God. No, it's simple. Simple. Okay. Now, we affirm, by affirming the Maker and His existence, now, how, we don't know. He's existent according to, you know, the Arabic is, Amru Nafsi. It's his personal affair. Yeah? Meaning that he exists in his in the limits of his that. Again, the limit. We uh, we're trying to make something understand. If we say he exists within the that, yeah? in Arabic they call it Hakikatul Hakaiq. That existence. Yeah. I don't know what it is. No one knows what it is. But he exists. He's wajibul wujud. His existence is necessary. We have to believe that he necessarily, is that good English? Necessarily yes. exists. He's the existent. Okay. Now, once we make it an obligation upon him that he's wajibul wujud, we negate the opposite of that. We negate the opposite. So, Imam Ibn Hajib says, evidence of him always having been. It, does that make sense in English? Yes, does. What does it mean? There's no pre-existence of any other than Allah. Other than Allah, yeah. Qidam. Yeah. Now, his existence is from his that, and all. This is it's a tongue twister, but you know, I'll read it, see if it makes sense. If it doesn't, uh, we'll try to tease it out. It is evident that the creator of creation is the necessarily existent. All the necessarily existent, his existence is from his that, all necessarily existent from his that, his non-existence is impossible. All whose non-existence is impossible never be his non-existence ever. All who be non-existence ever he is always been. He's Qidam. <laughs> but what it means, he's always been. Always been. There isn't any 
time that however fine we can cut it where he's never been he's always been so because he's always been he's wajibul wujud his existence is necessary okay the prophet alayhi salatu was salam you know um he says you antal uh, awwalu qabla kull shay like you know you're the first before everything it's a long dua it's in tirmidhi yeah want to baada kull shay that you know antal akhiru wala baada kull shay that you know you were the first uh, before you there's never been a thing you are the last after you that there will never be a thing but again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again in the Quran he says who will awwal he is the first and you know this first uh, awwal um sayyidina ali alayhi salam by the way you know if you can if you have time um it's worth um uh, if you've got access to you know the what are you called now jamil kabir yeah is it jamil kabir yeah jamil kabir of um, jalaluddin suyuti it's a 21 volume hadith work it has 100000 hadith in there and um you will find you know narrations from sayyidina ali on these points which is um, really interesting because what you what we are led to believe is that we are the ones that have come up with these and his conversations with jews yeah his conversations with jews uh who have come and asked him questions because what you find is that you know in medina there was a very healthy alhamdulillah you know the fitna thing was different but you know the knowledge interchange sometimes you know it was you know just to uh, push a, a point home but those interactions have been passed on yeah where you know they come and ask him how was god or where was god yeah or when was god all these you know sayyidina ali when he explains to them the end result is always they submit to god before i move on i just remember uh, you know one of these exchanges it's um uh, on one occasion they came a delegation of them came is they were usually rabbis learned men and said muhammad we hear that you know your companions have problems with whispers Yeah? you know that they hear and um he looked round who was round so abu bakr was sitting somewhere he says abu bakr can you answer them so sayyidna abu bakr looked at them smiled he says a thief doesn't come to an empty house <laughs> imam rahuni you know in his commentary on the mukhtasar of sidi khalil says the chain and rations is authentic <laughs> Okay. You know uh earlier on I was saying the arrangement of um, Ibn uh, uh, Hajib of the negation. So what he's done is he's given you know in a nutshell aqida. Yeah? Now he moves on to you know what is not. Yeah? He's not a composite Yeah, it's not murakkab negation of him being a composite now negation of him being a part or divided yeah these points are for us to understand you know when we're talking they're important that god is not a composite he's not divided yeah he's not incarnate in a part yeah? he's not incarnate negation of him in union it 
اتحاد with other than him yeah. negation of him incarnate you know being coming in time yeah. I want to talk about this bit yeah. because murakkab is easy he's not made up of different parts yeah him not being divided into ajza is clear him not being incarnate in a part this is what you know um, uh, the christian yeah the ittihad and hulul these are the arabic words um, you find that again um, what I was saying about the Sufi thing we get clobbered with yeah. now the state the, you know those statements of the Sufis people take them on the apparent meaning now each science has a terminology that terminology, the, the terminology of, you know, the physicist is not the same terminology of the mathematician. Same word, different meaning. Yeah? Now, the other thing that with this halul, we get the case of Imam Hallaj, Mansur al-Hallaj. Now, if you've got the money and you've got the time, there's a very good study on him. Um, in Arabic, it's Akhbar al Hallaj, they're in print, um, and his other works. In English and in French, it's called The Passion of Hallaj by um, uh, Massignon. It's worth reading. It's worth reading. Um, but there's two things that need to be w one first about um, the whole uh, story of Mansur al Hallaj and you know the thing that he is accused of. If, for instance, I end up in front of four judges three times, yeah. For the first two times, no judge will find me guilty. Will someone still dare to accuse me of that? Anything? Third time, the Prime Minister bribes the Maliki judge, Omar. Yeah? So there's a minority verdict given. The other three judges still wouldn't find him guilty. For that, by that judgment, he's, you know, um, martyred or killed, whatever way you want to look at it. Now, if the judges of the time couldn't find him guilty, do we know, know more now? Or the judges? Because yeah? they were hearing it firsthand. None of them found... This is in our books. Yeah. This is in our books. Alhamdulillah, you know, uh, um, if you read the Shifa, Qadi Ayyad quotes him left, right and centre. Yeah? And then, you know, um, uh, one of the great um, uh, um, Imams of the Madhab, you know, uh, Ibn al-Hajj, uh, the teacher of Sidi Khalil, yeah, in his madkhal, he says his understanding was the correct understanding. If you want, I will send you the... Actually, I might translate that bit. But it's worth, because he, he says that his understanding was correct. Yeah? And that's a faqih who's written a four-volume book. You know, the madkhal is on bid'at. It's a four-volume book, Madakhal, because you know he emigrated from Fez to Cairo and settled there. 
And um, he, he was, you know, shocked what was going on. Yeah? People are very, you know, choosy what they quote. Yeah? Alhamdulillah, you know, go through, it, 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 you get hal going through the book. Because, you know, he, he, he's telling you truths that, you know, uh, from, from a faqih, uh, yeah. Also, you find that you know there's the story about Imam Khalaj that you know his teacher found he found him guilty. You know Imam Junaid, yeah, wrong, wrong, totally wrong, totally wrong. Imam Junaid died in two hundred ninety-seven Hijri. Is agreed upon. No one challenges that. He died in 297 Hijri. Halaj was martyred in 309 Hijri. Yes. So, you know, how can we take, yeah? What is it, 12 year difference? Yeah? Oh, he, he might have come back, you know. You know, Sufis believe anything, but you know, he might have come back. And, huh? 300 and he, he passed away in 309 Hijri. Yeah. Now, how do we understand his statements? Um, I would recommend, if you can read Arabic, read Al-Luma fi Tariq al-Tasawf. Al-Luma. Tariq al Tasawf is a small book. Um, there is a very old summary translation of it by Nicholson, because he was the first one that brought the manuscript out. Um, but Dr. Abdul, Ham, uh, Abdul Halim, you know, the rector of Azhar, brought out a really good uh, edited edition of it with the hadith traced. Uh, in the end, he gives you explanations of the statements um, uh, uh, of these, you know, what are called shatihat. Mm. Yeah? Now, uh, if you want, you know, from an aqidah point of view, then read, read the commentary of um, Saduddin Taftazani on the Maqasid. Because he, he, he's not a Sufi. He's an expert on aqidah. He gives you an explanation. Yeah? Uh, I'll put it in my words. Sun Zai, Daylight, are the stars there? Can't see them. No, but they're there. Yeah. But we can't see them. Yeah? What we can see is the sun. That's what happens to the Sufi. He gets so God intoxicated, he doesn't see the other. Another way of understanding it, which is a lot easier, yeah, satellite feed. Yeah, if your satellite is, you know, correctly aligned, you get it. If it's, you know, slightly off, you don't get it. But you need to get the right alignment. And that's what happens to the Sufi at that state. His alignment is such, the feed is direct. Yeah? If the Shaykh hasn't prepared you, yeah, you'll either take it or you'll go over the top. Yeah? But again, what Saduddin Taftazani, he calls it uh, Id Mahlal. Id Mahlal. Id Mahlal. And how he explains it, he explains it exactly as I told you about the sun. The sun coming out, the sun is there, the stars are there. But the brightness of the sun overwhelms the other. Yeah? So when the Sufi is in that state, that's what he's talking about. He's not talking about, because you know, the... Um, uh, before I move on from this point, um, uh, Shaykh al-Akbar, uh, Ibn al-Arabi, an, 
he is being accused of God knows everything under the sun. Yeah? If anybody is brave enough, you know Dr. Ghurab, Al Ghurab, um, his challenge was to all his you know, um, attackers. He says, look, come, read a page with me correctly. He says, you can't even read his language, but you want to attack him. Yeah? But he has his aqidah, you know, in the Futuhat al makkiyah his aqidah is 101% the aqidah of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. No one has any problems with his aqidah. Because he puts the aqidah right at the beginning of the book. Yeah? He comes up with a statement which, you know, is. Uh, um, with which I want to move on. He says, Al Rabbu Rabb. Wahua Tanazil. Al Abdu Abd. It's literally, you know, in English where you have two ships um, passing at night. He says that's how the relationship is. The slave is the slave. He ascends. Not that, you know, there's union or incarnation. He says he ascends. And you know, the Lord, the sustainer is the sustainer. According to His Majesty, He descends. That's all it is. There is no meeting. There is no oneness. It's just that, you know, when the sun is out, when you're in that state of being, that's all you experience. So that's what you are. And again, uh, alhamdulillah, uh, we thank Allah, you know, for having given us scholars uh, um, like Ibn Hajj and, and all the others. Okay. Uh, the next one is the impossibility of him being in creation. Yeah. It's muhal for him to be in creation and to have a direction, ja. Yeah. Now, there's this very famous um, hadith which is used as evidence for this. Not the impossibility of it, but for him having a direction and by, you know, connection, applying his in. The hadith is in uh, the Muatta of Imam Malik. Actually, um, uh, in the Muatta, you find that Imam Malik, uh, right after it, brings the correct uh, hadith. Um, you find that, you know, um, uh, some uh, Sahabi comes, uh, uh, can I free her? So the Prophet says, is she Muslim? So I said, no, no. So he asks, so where is God? That's, she raises a finger to the sky. She says, free her. Right after this hadith, it's in the Kitab al Zakat, uh, freeing the slave. Um, uh, the Prophet وسلم, asks uh, this, uh, both narration are by Abu Hurairah. And Imam Malik, the reason why he brought it is because. His understanding is this. Right afterwards, uh, the Sahabi brings this girl and the Prophet ﷺ says, Is she a Muslim? He says, I don't know. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Say the Shahada. She says, I shahadu wa la ilaha illa wa shahadu anna Muhammad Rasul. He says, Free her. Mm-hmm. Now, um, Sayyid Abdullah bin Sadiq al Ghumari, rahmatullah alayhi, um, uh, uh, this family of scholars wonders of our time. You know, uh, memory or of the amount of hadith they knew and their scholarship is second to none. Um, he said, why Imam Malik has bought this, you know, the Shahada one? He says, that is how people became Muslim. 
That is how people became Muslim. Yeah. But, alhamdulillah, you know, we have um, people within, uh, within us who use this as that God is up there. Yeah. Um, I want to share with you, you know, Imam Mazari's opinion. Imam Mazari, um, alhamdulillah, if you're not familiar with him, he's um, one of those um, imams who reached the level of ijtihad where he could, if he wanted, begin his own school of fiqh. And you know, if, if, we, if the Malikis claimed this, then it would be our claim. But when someone like Imam Dhahabi affirms this, then you know there's some sub substance to the claim. Now, Imam Mazari um, uh, is, you know, um, very important to us in our fiqh. Uh, in, in other things as well. But uh, what Sidi Khalil did, he used his commentary on Talqeen in to um, uh, come up with the Mukhtasar. Yeah. It's one of the books that he used. He, Imam Mazari, is the teacher of Qadi Ayyad. Uh, and um, Qadi Ayyad completed his commentary. Um, Ikmal al Mu'allim. Uh, it's in print. Um, it's a very useful work. Now, Imam Mazri commenting uh, after this hadith of the slave girl says that at the time of the Jahiliyyah, the non Muslims would pray to their idols, they would ask their idols. The Muwahidun, when they would supplicate, they would raise their hands. They would raise their hands to the sky. Because the Qibla for Dawa is the sky. The Qibla for prayer is the Kaaba. And he said, no Muslim believes that God dwells in the Kaaba. This is Imam Mazari, you know, more than 800 years ago. He says, no Muslim believes that God dwells in the Kaaba. So how can we believe that God dwells in the sky? And he further on goes on to say that why the Prophet ﷺ asks her is he wanted her to manifest her faith. Yeah. So what the understanding that Imam Mazri is giving is that she's declaring her faith in her own way. She's not saying that because she raised her finger towards the heavens or towards the... Which is, is it heavens or sky? Which is better? Sky. Sky, yeah. But doesn't heaven mean Jannah? No, no, no. no? Well, heaven does, but heavens. Heavens. Yeah. Heavens? Yeah. Well, heavens is a poetical way of referring to the sky. Okay. Yeah. okay. So he, the Prophet ﷺ, wanted her to manifest her iman in her own way. Mm -hmm. She manifested it. Because, you know, people supplicate with their finger. That's what, you know, Imam Mazari, that's why he brings, you know, the, uh, the Qibla of that, the sky, just uh, for supplication. And um, uh, she manifested it. Now, Qadi Iyad, um, in this, he says that, you know, there is no difference. This is really important because, you know, Qadi Iyad is someone that, we find that there's agreement on. Because you know people say there's agreement on Imam Nawawi. Yeah. Yeah? 
yeah. and why why Muslims are agreeing upon Imam Nawawi not because him being a Shafi Faqih. Mm. He, they're agreeing on Imam Nawawi because of his commentary on Hadith, on Sahih Muslim. Mm. And who he's quoting left, right and centre yeah. is Qadi Ayyad. Yeah. It's based on Qadi Ayyad. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Imam uh, Qadi Ayyad, he, you know, right after Imam Mazri's comment, he says there is no difference between all the Muslims. They're experts in Hadith, the Muhaddithun, the Fuqaha, you know, the Nudar, you know, the theorists. And those who follow the scholars, you know, the Muqallidun. Indeed, what is transmitted of the apparent in regard to God being in the sky, or do you feel secure that he who is over the heaven, that is not understood on the apparent meaning. Mm. That is Qadiyyad. He says, where Allah says that, you know, mm. he's in ala sama, he says, no. He says, that is what there's ittifaq, mm. consensus, that this is all done in ta'wil. You interpret it. Mm. Yeah? I'll come to ta'wil in a minute. Imam Qurtubi, you know, um, this is not, you know, the Mufassir, but you know, the uh, uh, Sahib al-Mufham. You know, uh, Mufham is um, uh, another commentary on Sahih Muslim. It's um, uh, on the Mukhtasar of Sahih Muslim. He says, whosoever carries the Hadith on the apparent meaning is one who has gone astray and is leading others astray. Yeah? He is a doll. That's the word he uses. Yeah? And Mudillin, he's, you know, leading them astray. That's Imam Qurtubi. Now, I want to, uh, this is um, uh, Imam Qurtubi. Uh, we've done that. Uh, this is from Tamheed of Ibn Abdul Bar. By the way, you know Imam Hafiz Ibn Abdul Bar, misunderstood personality. People pick and choose. Mm. Yeah? He categorically says that there is no literal acceptance of these narrations. There is Ta'wil. If you do not do Ta'wil, you do not take the apparent meaning of it. Now, he says, Muhammad bin Ali al-Jabali, he was from the upright Muslims from al karawan He says, he narrated and said, it related to us, Jami ibn Sauda in Egypt. He said, related to us, Mutarraf. Mutarraf is a, um, a companion of Imam Malik. Uh, from Malik ibn Anas, that he asked about the hadith, indeed God descends in the night to the sky of the world. Yeah? Imam Malik says his command descends. His command. Now, this is, you know, people who call themselves Salafi. Imam Malik is a Salafi Imam. He's an Imam from the Salaf. Because, you know, he is, uh, he is someone who saw those who saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah? He saw the Tabi'un, who saw the Sahaba. Yeah? Now, the next bit that Sidi Ibn um, Ibn Hajib has in the text and the impossibility of the establishment of creation in him. Yeah? You know this that everything, all of it is in, is impossible. Also, the establishment of pain and taste, it, Allah doesn't have that. Yeah. Now, you know what I've just mentioned and what I'm going to um, share with you in a minute is that, you know, the manhaj, the methodology, of the 
أهل السنة والجماعة إن عقيدة بيدي عشري أو ما تريدي We have two methodologies within that methodology One is called tafweed The other is called ta'weed Tafweed is We read And we pass it on, we transmit We do not add anything to it yeah? Whatsoever yeah? For instance, you know, if our friends Just said in the hadith And narrated the hadith in the ayah Without any addition whatsoever Without implying anything That's fine yeah? That's one you know, river that runs within this method. The other is interpretation, but interpretation which is called ta'wil, but according to lang linguistic understanding, how the language was understood. Yeah? So here we have Imam ibn al-Hajib saying, indeed he is attributed by waj. I'll come back to them. Yadain and Istawa on an opinion. That's one opinion. And it is an obligation that he be independent from Makan place yeah, on an opinion. And by the attributes of smell, taste, taste and touch on an opinion. Yeah? Um, these words, waj, you know, English, a simple translation would be face. But when we think of face, yeah, there's an image. When we say hands, there's an image. When we say on, there's an understanding. Yeah? Now, How they are interpreted is a different thing. But what I want to share with you is the understanding of the Imam who we follow. Imam Malik Radilan. Because as I said before, you know, he's an Imam of the Salaf. Yeah? And um, the narration is authentic. So, Hurmala bin Yahya narrates, he said, I heard Abdullah bin Wahab. Now, Abdullah bin Wahab is someone who spent 20 years with Imam Malik. And he's an Imam who is thiqa, yeah, upright, trustworthy. Saying that he heard Malik ibn Anas saying, Whosoever describes a thing from the that of God, that of Allah. Now you see, our understanding now is that, you know, the, all the things that we've mentioned before, waj, yad, so on and so forth, they are from the that of Allah. Yeah? Imam Malik is saying, a thing from the that of God. Similar to his statement, and the Jews say, the hand of God is tied up in Surah Ma'idah. And indicated to his hand. So Imam Malik read the ayah, and then he said, and he indicated to his hand and to his neck. And then similar, al Basir, he is all hearing, all seeing, and he indicated to his eyes or his ears, or a thing from his body. Yeah? Now here's the hukum of Imam Malik. He says, cut that from him. Cut whatever he's indicated to, from him, for in that he has compared himself to God. He's an imam, a Salafi imam. This is our aqidah. Yeah? He carries on. Then he, Malik said, have you not heard the statement of Al-Bara, Al-Bara bin Ahza, you know the great, uh, one of the companions, of the Prophet because Imam Malik is, you know, explaining uh, um, his position and what his thinking is based on. He says, have you not heard? 
uh, of um, Al Bara when he narrated that the Prophet, Allah's prayer and peace be upon him, said, "Do not slaughter in fall from the sacrifice." Yeah. Al Bara indicated to his hand, like what the Prophet sallallahu had indicated. Al Bara said, "My hand is shorter than the hand of the Messenger of God, sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Because you see that. Um, Anyway, don't carry out the hukum. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ had raised four fingers like that. And Al-Bara raised them and then dropped them. Yeah? And he, 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 he you know, uh, he felt ashamed. Yeah? Now, Imam Malik says that Al-Bara said, My hand is shorter than the hand of Rasulullah ﷺ. Now, Imam Malik says, Al-Bara abhorred that he described the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for he was in awe of him. He, he, you know, felt so that, you know, he had compared his hand to the hand of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then Imam Malik said, and said that he's created. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is created. Then how about the Creator? For whom there is no similitude with a thing. Now this is Imam Malik. Yeah. Now, I I don't think you can kind of get a clearer. And this, by the way, this is um, Ibn Abdul Bar in the Tamhid. This is Ibn Abdul Bar in the Tamhid. So, what you find is you have to um, understand. It according, you know, when Tawil is done, it's in accordance with uh, usage. Um, what you find is that our brethren say that you know we take the dahir, yeah. So for arguments' sake, we say okay, take it. Yeah. So ask them. Yadullahi fauka aidihim. In Surah Fat, what Allah says. My hand is over their hand. By the way, they do not accept that literally. They do not accept literally. They say that's majaz. So you know, for what reason? You just said that you're manhaj. But they like this word. Yeah, they like yeah? yeah, they're manhaj. Yeah, is that they take the apparent? So if you take the apparent, why don't you take the apparent here? Because if they do, they've committed kufr. They have committed disbelief. How? Because they've just accepted that God has entered creation. Which is impossible. God does not enter creation. That is why they say there's majaz. So if they say, then you say, if you say there's metaphor, so What's the problem? Yeah. Anyway. There's um uh, he has these um uh, he put these things in which are negative things. He says by eternal other than continuity on an opinion and by knowledge, power, life with those who affirm change, and by limited knowledge on an opinion, and by mercy, acceptance, generosity, other than will on opinion, the correct, authentic position, that there is no evidence on these attributes, neither in affirmation nor in negation. There is no evidence. Yeah? So all these, you know, from indeed he is attributed by which? Two, in affirmation and negation. There's no evidence. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know in English, uh, I mean in England, I think in the UK, if you said to someone, go and put the kettle on, what would you get afterwards? You get a cup of tea. If you said that to the Australian? <laughs> uh, what would you get? Is English. You'd get a bath, would you? Are you Australian? <laughs> no. Okay. No, but the thing is, you see, is English, 
but the usage and how the metaphor is used is understood. And it's the same with the Arabs of the time of the Prophet when they, when Allah said that you know bal yadahu mabsutatan that you know his hands are wide open. You know when the Jews said his hands are tied behind his neck, the Arabs understood straight away. The Jews are saying that Allah is niggardly, you know, and Allah is saying no, not I'm generous, open hand. Even in English now, yes. open handed. Open-handed. They understood straight away. So they knew this was nothing to do. Yeah. And you know the thing of the sky, we've already, Imam Mazri has explained how they understood it. About the istawa. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, His arsh encompasses the heavens and the earth. Yes? Yeah. Now, what's being implied? In English, if we said that, you know, so-and-so was on the throne, what did we mean? He's the, he's the king. He's the ruler. It's exactly the same. This is why you find Imam Malik says, Istawa ma'akul wa sawal anhu bid'a. Yeah? He says, we know is reasonable, the istawa, because they understood the use of Ajit. But to ask how, says his bid'ah, and he transmits that from his teacher, Abdur, uh, Rabi ibn uh, uh, Abdul Rahman, Rabi al Ra'i. He transmits that again in the Tamheed. The usage was known, they understood, because Arabic, you know, the Quran fixed the meaning. Yeah? It fixed it. It's not, we don't need, you know, an anthropomorphic Afghan from Herat coming up with 40 anthropomorphic hadith to explain to us the Arabic usage. Yeah? And we don't need a Hanbali, you know, from Mosul telling us, I found evidence for everything other than a beard. Yeah? It's known. They knew. Alhamdulillah, you know, as I said before, we've got imams who are little imams of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah that w- they did not take the literal. Yeah? If they, they would not add, they would not add. You know, um, uh, uh, Abdul Malik uh, bin Abdul Aziz ibn al Majishun, the Mufti of um, uh, Medina after Imam Malik. Um, he's he, his student. He's Ibn uh, Abdul Aziz's son, Abdul Aziz Ibn Majishun. Abdul Aziz Ibn Majishun. Uh, it's really um, it's worth uh, uh, you know in our mind keeping this name somewhere because it's really important because we uh, get a lot of stick that you know the Imam wrote the book um, because um, you know the king came. And he uh, commanded him to write a book. Mm. So, you know, uh, your imam right from the beginning was, you know, in the pocket of the rulers and um, he was a puppet and so and so he wrote a book. You get it, left, right and centre. But the problem is, Abdul Aziz, Ibn Majishun, wrote a book. And Imam Malik looked at it. And he said, wouldn't this be good if there was evidence for these opinions? Mm. So he wrote the book. Mm. Yeah? The book got written in the early 140s. Yeah? Because we know the first narrator died in 150 Hijri, before the king came. Yeah? By the way, you know... Um, uh, a section of that book, you know, Kitab al Hajj, of Magician is in print. Seriously. I've got it at home. <laughs> <laughs> it, and it, you know, when you read it, you can understand why Imam Malik made that statement. Because it's not that uh, Abdul Aziz is not using 
you know, uh, hadith, he's not presenting it as hadith. He's just, you know, backing his, saying uh, so-and-so's opinion was this. Uh, he got a, he, uh, some of the uh, um, Malikis from Kerawan wrote to uh, Abdul Malik ibn Abdul Aziz uh, saying about this. He wrote back the position is that we do not add anything. And we do not, it's like we just, if we come across a text, we read it, that's it. We do not add anything whatsoever. By the way, you know, um, uh, this uh, Abdul Malik, uh, he proves, um, I think if you remember me for anything, you remember me for Sufis. <laughs> he proves categorically with a positive uh, um, transmission, an authentic transmission of the existence of a group of Sufis at the time of Imam Malik who come to Imam Malik and they are described as a Sufi. He says that a group of Sufiya, a man from the Sufiya came and then Imam Malik said to the Sufi, Ird, you know, um, read, because that's how the motto was transmitted. And the Sufi says, we don't do that. <laughs> and Qadi Yad has it in his, you know, um, if you uh, uh, get, you know, um, Khatib Baghdadi's um, uh, Istalahatul Hadith, uh, Ibn Salas, um, and Qadi Yad, Ilma, you will find uh, this narration. Um, our, our brothers love it. Because it categorically proves. Uh, my, my, you know, argument is that I can take it. You know, to the majlis of you know a Salafi Imam. You take yours to a Salafi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Of course, there's the Nuran mystery as well. No, the water from him. And Bishr al Hafi. And Bishr al Hafi. And Bishr al Hafi. But uh, those the Nun al Misri uh, weren't weren't known as Sufis. Yeah? yeah, they became imams of the Sufis. Um, uh, uh, Abdul Hakam actually writes to Dunul al Misri. It's um, well, um, uh, it's either in uh, um, the Mushaf of, um, I mean, the uh, Malikiyah, you know, Jami of Ibn Yunus. Uh, it, it's in one of the Umahat where he writes to Dunul al Misri saying, please, you know. Put a, keep, put a, keep, keep a lid on it. <laughs> um, words to that effect. But uh, with this, because you know, you usually find that um, uh, they bring, you know, the narration from uh, uh, Tanisi, uh, um, uh, from the Tartib al Mudarik, where, you know, um, a man, uh, a sheikh, comes from Tanis, um, uh, from a group who are known as Sufis who, you know, sing and dance and eat. You know that one. Yeah. And he laughs. Yeah. So it's a negative. Yeah. yeah? And there's, you know, problem with the narration. Yeah, there's a problem with the narration. Right? So this is a negative. Yeah? While this one, in the Ilma, where Qadi Yad is the one who transmits this from, there's no... It, it, and also, there's uh, then a, a group who are known as Sufia. And then... A rajul minhum, Sufi. This is a man from this, who's a Sufi, uh, and that's in the ilma of um, uh, 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 of Qadi Ayad um, uh, in the section on Ird. Okay. Now, indeed. He is powerful on all things, controlled by internal power, established by his that. Noah by all known, by knowledge, established by his that. Willing for all creation, by will, established 
by his death. Do you remember before when I said established? It's the mirror, you should only see one. Yeah? All seeing, all hearing, by these extra attributes on knowledge being the most correct position speaking by an eternal speech established by his that can i i want to stop here for a bit you know speaking speech um who's who who's good on the bible <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, uh, but by the way, this is something that we uh, have to first familiarize ourselves with. Um, you know, Qadi Sahnoon, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, it's a very well known case. Um, this Christian wanted to be tried by a Muslim judge. He's stolen from the altar. And um, he knew if he went in front of the Christian judge, they found guilty. So he thought, I'll go to the Muslim judge. Case was brought in front of Sahnoon Radilan, and Sahnoon said, What did you do? He said, I'm accused of this. And he says, Describe it to me. So, you know, he thought that he's not going to know. So he describes, he says, You're a liar. <laughs> and they described the altar better than the priests could. He says, I'm the judge of this city. I have to know what goes on in my city. Uh, we have, you know, one of um, uh, the lost, um, uh, uh, so many lost, lost points that we Muslims, especially in Birmingham, miss out on, that we have, you know, mosques opposite churches. Uh, no interaction whatsoever. Apart from one, I've never forgotten that one. One of them, uh, the mosques wouldn't let women in. And you know what the women did? They went across the road. And the priest said, welcome. Anyway, Kalam, the Bible, first there was the word, uh, what, what is it? The word was with God, the word was God, yeah, so, you know, this is one thing that we Muslims have to accept. The influence. Not in a negative sense. Yeah? But you know, when you are talking to people, it can be used in a positive way. Because yeah. you know, Ma'amun, when he began the, um, uh, the you know, translation, Bayt al-Hikmah, yeah? Baytul Hikmah. It literally opened the floodgates to notions, ideas that we were not prepared for. Yeah? And we had to come up with answers. Yeah? And the answers, alhamdulillah, you know, some were good, some were bad. But, you know, they have developed. Now, this I notion of the word being with God and being God, yeah. And then you know the notion of the Lagos, or is it Logos? Logos. Logos, yeah. These are pre Islamic, pre Muslim ideas, but they have overlapped, yeah. Um, uh, People usually think that, you know, when the Abbasid period began, that's when they came in. But John of Damascus was in, based in uh, Syria. Uh, the, cap, the Muslim capital uh, was Damascus. 
um, uh, some of his works have been translated. But he was challenging Muslims left, right and centre. Yeah. Now, the best way to understand the kalam, yeah, best way, I'll tell you what it's not before I come to what it is. It's not the Mus'haf. Yeah? It's not on the preserved tablet. I mean, that's not the... Yeah? It's not what Jibreel brought. It's not what descended on the heart. Yeah? What we are talking about, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is uncreated, is the attribute of kalam. It's when we, when we Sunni Muslims say that the Quran is the uncreated word of God, yeah, we do not mean the Mus'haf. We do not mean what's on the Lohi Mahfuz. We do not mean what Jibreel was given. We do not mean what descended on the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu yeah? Now, all of that, they're there, but it doesn't make sense. Yeah? Because within the Maturidi and Ashuri, Aqidah, you know, framework, is there's two categorical divisions. Yeah? There's God and there's creation. Categorical. What is God is not creation. What is creation is not God. Yeah? And we don't want to fall into this trap that, you know, the word was God. The word was with God. And the word is God. Yeah? There's God, there's creation. Now, the best, you know, I, my son understood it. He's 18, but I think, you know, if an 18 year old can understand it. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Allah creates the words within the soul. Allah, with the Anbiya, He creates, you know, we really don't know what revelation is. We don't know. If, if you, uh, yes, Jibreel brings it. But you know, it descended where? That you know, the angel brought, the archangel Jibreel brought it on your heart. Yeah? It descended on high, on your heart. We know it's not the physical heart that's being talked about. It's the spiritual heart. That's, so it's what Allah created within the soul of the Prophet ﷺ. Yeah? What was created within the soul of the Prophet ﷺ was the Word of God. So when the Prophet ﷺ recited it, it was not his words, he was reading the words of God. Do you, does that make sense? Does it make sense? Because if I say that, you know, it's the uncreated word of God, it's not created and not creating, to me, it's gobbledygook. Because yeah? aqidah is in, must make sense. Yeah? So, it's something that God himself created within the soul of the Prophet ﷺ. Of course, you know, he has means, which is Jibreel. 
But, so when those words were recited, the Prophet ﷺ was reading the words of God. Okay? Now, the difference is automatic, because you know it's the same tongue. Because we have revelation, we have um, uh, Quran, we have Hadith Qudsi, and we have Hadith. From the same tongue. Yeah? But revelation stands out. Well, the others are uh, types of revelation. But the word of God stands out. Yeah? Like the sun from the rest. Yeah? Uh, what the Mus'haf is, is a record, is a signpost to... No, to the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he speaks. It's, it's you know, a, a signpost. And all the other books that came were signposts. Because yeah? Allah wrote it, Muhammad articulated it. Moses articulated it. And you know all the other Anbiya before. Yeah? Does that make sense is can you grasp it yeah it's not you know the mushaf yeah okay it's not the mushaf which is uncreated is the speech of god that is uncreated and inshallah we'll um stop here for today inshallah and um if allah gives us tafiq some other time inshallah, inshallah. to carry on is a pleasure Thank you. Pleasure. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzatim, Ma'ayisifun, Wassalamun ala Musaleen, Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.